Okay, here we're going to do some basic drawing stuff for a landscape. And uh, I'm doing this digitally. I might do another analog demo. Um, but the concepts stay the same whether you're working on uh, a piece of paper or on a screen, whether you're in Photoshop, Procreate, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, so here I've got a little teeny uh, thumbnail picture of a basic landscape. And um, what I'm going to do is uh, work on more of like a film. Well, maybe I won't work on a film format. I'll do. I'll I'll change the actual shape of this rectangle so it's more landscape-ish. Um, and then go in. And what I've done here is basically created a little box to work within. Um, now, without that box on your piece of paper, what you're going to do is draw out a little format that's the same as the paper that you want to work with. So if you're working on 18 by 24 paper, it needs to be the same shape as that 18 by 24 paper, for example. Um, if you're working on 8 by 10, it needs to be a little mini version of 8 by 10. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to start is you're going to start thumbnailing out this composition because you can do various things with it. For example, um, we can lower the horizon relative to the photograph. So the horizon comes down here as if we're like and then we can make it as if we're going to sit on the ground. You'll kind of notice that these um, that we don't have a lot of overlap here, especially from foreground into the middle ground to the background. So what we can do is we can take this shape of all these things here. We can bring these bushes over here a little higher so that when we come out into the area here, we're going into the lake, we can get a little more overlap these this bank of trees here. Use a, a darker brush here. So this could be our bank of trees. And what we're doing uh, for these thumbnails is we're thinking in basically just overlapping shapes. Remember that your most powerful tool in landscape that we talked about in the last video when we were just analyzing old master landscapes is overlap. Okay. Then you're combining that with foreground, middle ground, and background. So we're taking sort of background shapes. We're overlapping those. And then here, since there's no actual sky stuff going on, there's no clouds, that's kind of lame. So we need clouds. So what we can do is bring in a reference from the sky. And we can introduce clouds here. Something with a good shape to it, like this one. OK. So if we look at that, we have like good strong diagonals. There's a little rain burst. I'm going to move that and then um, Actually, probably flip it around so we get a diagonal motion because we have, um, if we look at it this way, we have kind of a diagonal motion sweeping like this, right? So if we run a counter uh, counter movement, it'll probably be better. So we can do a cloud burst kind of here, kind of going off the page. And we can draw the bottom of this cloud here. And then come in and pull some clouds like kind of there and going behind here too and we can even probably put some smaller clouds back here kind of pepper them behind here maybe overlap a couple Okay, and then we have kind of a basic layout here. 
then we can do it again and we can shift things around so we did kind of a one-third horizon we could go to like a 40 percent or even lower uh, we could even zoom in if we wanted to so we could take a small subset of this thing and we can also shift these uh, layers around and flip them uh, if we want so we could say well all right maybe i want the horizon to be even lower here and then come in uh, with this kind of shape here bring it down And then maybe I like this um, grass bit coming in here. Maybe I want to level it out a little more, potentially. Um, maybe I want that to overlap more. It's like a race, and then say, well, I got I want to get grasses like kind of in this extreme foreground and just kind of. Have a little stuff peek through. Then I want some like low, far distance stuff. Then another larger bit here for trees. And maybe I want some different cloud shapes this time. In different positions. Still based off the same reference, right? Just approaching it in different ways. Okay, so there we have it. So this process where we take one reference and we do multiple little sketches and shift the composition around slightly to improve on the photograph that's called thumbnailing um, and this is the most important sort of process that you have in your back pocket now the next thing that you're going to do when you're developing a landscape is to do a study i'm going to switch to a different reference because i think it's important to see like how you would approach different references because um, I think that's that's a tricky thing when you're especially when you're first starting out is like you see this incredibly complex landscape how do you simplify it down so you can draw it um, so here's a complex one lots of rocks and everything. We'll shrink it down so it can become manageable and we can and we can see it as we draw. Um, so this time what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do a study here and this will be slightly more developed. So here we go. So when you're ready and you pick the thumbnail that you like you're gonna on your page you're gonna draw like something about five by seven inches and this is gonna be your study all right I'm gonna use um, a uh, more of a graphite brush to kind of Make it feel like pencil a little more. That should work just fine. Okay, so here, um, this has a high horizon, so I might need to lower it down to the down to the sixty percent range here. Um, if you're beginning, I think you want to stay under the halfway point for a horizon line, because then you don't have to do as much perspective. But you know. I've been doing this for a bit, so I think it'll be it'll work out okay. 
And I'm going to skip the whole thumbnailing process because I kind of like the composition of this photograph. And I feel like I can just kind of run with it a little more. So here, I actually have kind of like, I have basically two little foreground layers I can use immediately. I can follow the shapes of everything loosely and develop a quick composition here. So this is going to be my foreground, right? Now I have to look in this, into this for a middle ground. So the middle ground is this pile of rocks back here. So I need to just slightly develop a middle ground. It's going to have more small shapes. Um, I may need to move this down because it's going to be like under the horizon more. This one kind of pops over the horizon line. There's this really interesting shape there that comes out. It's a little strange and unique. I'm drawing rocks. I want to be sure to mix in plenty of straight lines with some curves because rocks weather, but they're also very angular sometimes. Okay, so now I have my foreground and I've kind of made a clear statement about what that shape is like. I've got my middle ground um, and now I need the background and the background kind of has a couple of components. So here I've got the rocks coming in this way. So I've got a little window to the ground there. And if I want to shift that line, I can. It's not a big deal. And then in the far distance, I've got some mountains and things back here. And then I've got sort of a ground plane, which you can indicate with some perspective lines if you want, if needed. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to take my foreground shape my middle ground shape and my background shape and combine that with light, medium, and dark values. Okay, so let's say my dark value is here. My medium value is here. And my light value is either the white of the page or this, but I'm going to use a little tone just to be clear. So, um, it'll make more make more sense. Um, so what I'm going to do is say, well, basically since the sun's really far away, I'm going basically dark to light. So what I'll do is I'll just say, okay, well, you know, this foreground shape, I'm just going to fill this in dark. And I'm not going to actually put the little lights or highlights on it because you can really see very clearly that there's a lot of light in the foreground and it's very bright. It's not as bright as the uh, as the sun going down back there. But it's pretty bright. Okay, so this is when you get the side of your pencil out and you just kind of fill fill the page, um, and you really work on the shape of this foreground element. Now, the concept that we're working with is also called silhouette. Right? We're working on just the shape of everything. We're not working on um, anything but. Now behind that, we go into the middle ground, pick our middle value, and that's going to go behind there, and we're going to pay attention to the shape. and work our way relatively slowly, but, you know, progressing, right? We're not going to get stuck on anything. We don't want to start rendering at this point and putting, like, light effects in it. All we're doing is, like, analyzing how our uh, foreground, middle ground, and background work. 
at this point. Okay. Now for our background, we choose our light value. And that goes back here over everything that's in the background, regardless of what that object is or what light is falling on it. Okay. So now we've accomplished our study, and what we do is we keep this the thumbnails and our study together. You know, ideally you're gonna do a thumbnail and then do a study based on that thumbnail, just blowing it up a little bit bigger having uh, a good um, size to analyze the shapes and then you move on, right? So um, here I've kind of broken that rule where I've done thumbnails from one and a study from another. Um, so the next stage is to actually then move in to your fully realized thing. And before you do that, you're gonna need to know how to draw a few things. So we should do a little side note about that, okay? I'm gonna open up a new file And we can just go over kind of how to draw some things. I'm gonna keep this. I'm actually gonna keep this behind here, just for later. Um, I'm gonna move this down here, and pick up a reference for some stuff that you might need to draw. Like uh, you might need to draw rocks, so maybe we'll draw rocks here for a second. Um, find a good rock reference with good lighting on it because lighting makes drawing rocks very easy to do. Flat lighting makes drawing rocks very difficult, I think. And there's all the different rock types that create various shapes. And drawing like a rock on the ground is kind of different than drawing like a cliff side or something like that. So here, let's take a look at this rock here. Um, and I'll make this a little smaller. Let's draw a couple of rocks like this. Okay, now, rocks. All right, so let's, I, I'm a fan of the two-sided rock. So what you do is you take your outer shape of the rock, remembering that it's organic, but it's also kind of straight some rocks are weathered so they'll have little curves on there but if it if you make it too curved it doesn't really look rocky anymore so then what we do is we look at this shadow um, on our reference and we use that as reference and we can um, we can then basically divide this into two segments one is a light segment and one is a dark segment And then we can take our dark segment and we can just plop in some tone. Right? Now, if we need, if this rock is like not the focus, like this is just something within the landscape layout, this is good enough. Like this can be completely finished. If this rock is the focus of the landscape, if this is like the neatest thing there and, and what you really want to draw, you'll have to develop it further. Okay. Now let's do another example. This rock over here is kind of neat because we can actually see uh, three sides of it. Um, but still, we'd want to keep to the to the two sided rock feel.
So here's another approach to it. What I can do is I can draw kind of one face of the rock, sort of the front, and then I can draw down to the bottom here. Then I can draw this third side. And come up with something like that, right? So then I would need to come through and just kind of fix some of the shapes here. This is a very complicated shadow shape because the rock's turning organically. Here's where you get the side of the pencil out and just work this tone down. Take your time with it. So here's the two-sided rock feel, right, where we're basically just putting one tone over the whole thing. And if I wanted to get the three-sided rock going, kind of define this edge a little more and then I would probably push the value down here so the way I kind of see this is that this side of the rock is a little bit darker from the reference Okay, so that rock could sit in there. Okay, now the other thing to think about is if you just, if you know you need a rock there and you want to come back later, you can kind of just put like a rock placeholder around. Then you can come back and you can rework the shape more and make it more accurate towards the rock that you that you need to have or want to have there and work in your shadow shapes and everything so you can do a quick rock placeholder that's sort of blobby and then come back and develop into into this in another layer okay so you can work in in stages okay so that's it for rocks they're not very complex um, you know if you remember you're just drawing two sides paying attention to the lighting um, definitely we should do trees um, because you're probably going to be drawing a bunch of trees so let me get some tree references open and show you what we could do here so um, you might have a tree that's kind of large in your landscape that you need to focus on so we can look at a tree like this um, there's some generic tree shapes that you can use depending on the type of tree. Of course, you can, you know, draw a triangular tree uh, very much like you did when you were a kid, right? And you can put that in as a placeholder. Sometimes, like, pines are kind of tall and they have sort of a wonky lollipop feel to them. Um, other times you have oak trees like this one, which are kind of squarish. And you can do kind of a placeholder like this. Um, and then you can come back and develop the shape later. So we'll take this one, which is kind of squarish. And we'll say, okay, well, it's kind of blobby like that. Um, it has a V-shaped trunk. It hits the ground kind of like that. And I always draw the ground around it, just to be sure that I know, understand what's what's going on here. I have several thick branches coming out that I can track. Okay. And I kind of lose the branches in here, but I know they're there. 
so I can kind of sketch them. Then I need to pay attention to more of the outer contour. Um, so this bottom is fairly simple, so I can kind of leave it pretty simplistic like that. Um, then here, there's a lot kind of like flaring out from the edges. And it dips in and goes out, dips in, goes out, dips in here. comes flares out like that these organically monkey shapes breaks out a little more like this maybe okay great then around here to kind of cover up the this area it does something like this okay now I do the same thing that I did with the rock is I divide light and dark. So basically um, we're getting like a lot of ambient light. Maybe it's coming from the top right a little bit. So what I can see is go in here and I can start defining some shadow shapes. They're fairly complicated on a tree. But what I basically want to do is create an overall shadow shape. And then I want to have a couple of floating shadow shapes in there. So now I come in and I start filling in these shadow shapes with some tone. And since I focused on the outer edge and the light and dark areas, it's going to look like a tree pretty quickly. I can add a little bit if I need to here just to make it more, more tree-like, a little more accurate. And I can put some tone on the trunk too. So this is the kind of tree that would kind of go in the, like the, the front of the middle ground, depending on how far you are away. Um, again, this is for a tree that's not the focus of the composition, but it's there, it's clear, and you want to you be able to see the whole tree, okay? And this is a, a pared down, simplified, not rendered tree, but it will do to pop into a landscape and be effective. You might also see um, other types of trees, which um, I can uh, bring up here in a minute. Let me find a good pine. Scrolling through a bunch of references here to try to find something that's like kind of iconic. Oh, I know where to go. This will take me a minute to find, but it'll be worth it, I promise. Okay, here we go. Okay. 
here's a cool one. All right, so here this tree is like um, really kind of iconically neat pine. And I would say it's closest to uh, this thing right here um, because you have that long um, trunk going up. So what we do is we would draw like a rough estimate of what this kind of looks like, like that. And then you'll notice that the trunk is weighted a little to the left and it's got a slight arc. So we want to pick up the, on that and exaggerate it some. And then most of the branches are on the right side here. So we can start throwing out a few branches and eliminating a bunch. And then for balance, we would want to put a couple out here, kind of short. And then here, most of the branches are larger and the trunk kind of bends this way, which I think is kind of cool. And then eliminate some of that. Then we can start working into sort of what the outer contour of this looks like, you know, creating an interesting silhouette for it. knowing that the silhouette is going to be a little less complicated on the bottom than on the top because what's happening with these um, branches is that you get a branch that comes out like this maybe right and then all the little pine bits are growing kind of on top of it more or less like that so that means when we go out here we're gonna have a simple uh, bottom and a very complicated detailed top. Okay, Then we need to divide light and dark which is fairly simple. It's basically we have a bottom and a top here. So we kind of go like this. So the bottom of this is going to be our tone. Let me run tone through it. And more or less we leave the top alone for now. And then if we want to, we can create kind of a fade here. Emphasize certain areas that are a little darker. All right, and we can't see the ground, so we hide that with some of these. In fact, you could do a nice little um, foreground, middle ground, landscape thumbnail just with this image, right? Because you have a foreground of grass, you have these two, the dead pine and the living pine in the middle ground, that little tree there, and then you have uh, bushes in the background. And so you could create a pretty interesting low depth landscape that way, um, where the tree is kind of the main focus. Okay, so that's trees. Um, You might need to draw specific plants too. Um, so let me go in here and work on some plants. And we need to keep these plants very, very simple. Um, otherwise, we're not going to be effective at drawing. You know, this is actually a pretty good. Um, example of what we might need to simplify. So we need to come in and we need to figure out how to draw these plants without going crazy. So what we first do is we say, well, okay, this is kind of coming around a bend and we can use our ribbon form, right? So we take basically this kind of a ribbon and we say, okay, well, this is going to go organic and become plants. And then we say, well, let's simplify these down. Basically, each one of these plants is kind of like a circle. So we go in here and we start layering these plants back in space. Okay. Then we do the same thing. We can say, well, all right, these need a, li to be a little more complexity to be interesting. So 
so we can go through. Again, th this would be something for more of the foreground, right? If these are in the background, you would never put this much detail into it. Okay. Then up here, especially, we could then focus on creating a light and a dark area. Right? And then we could put these areas into tone. And follow the exact same process that we used with the trees, but now we're drawing plants up close. And when we plop that into a landscape, it's going to make a lot more sense, right? If you have, say, um, groomed bushes, that could be something different, where you need to be um, more rigid in the structure. So here's a pretty good example, groomed bushes. And again, it, this all has to do with the ribbon form again, as well as box forms and so on. So here we see a bunch of groomed ones. And so we go, OK, well, this kind of has like a large groomed area shape. And I'll, I'll focus kind of on the front ones. Right? And then under it, we kind of have the root structures coming down to the ground here. And then we need to divide the, the sides of it into light and dark areas. Comes down. And then we can work on our top shape a little more. Then we can divide light and dark by putting tone down. And then under here is pretty dark as well. So we could throw in and put kind of some more shadow in there. OK. And again, that could get plopped in pretty successfully, I think. Um, if we have to draw flowers, that can get more complicated, but um, shouldn't be a big deal. Again, this also all depends on distance. Like, you know, for you to actually draw a flower, um, it would have to be pretty close to you. All right, so let's take this. That's a pretty good flower example. So if we look at, say, the, uh, the structure of it, basically what it is is it's a cone. Right? And then that cone just sort of organically flares out into ribbony petals, right? Like that. Okay, so this is very obvious and not at the angle we obviously want to draw this at. Okay. Let me do a better job. Okay, so what we would say is, all right, I can see the inside of the cone here, and the cone is kind of invisible and going back like this, and then it's bending down into the larger structure of the flower itself, okay? So then what I want to say is, okay, well, I've got a ribbon coming out, so I know with from drawing ribbons that this leaf right here comes out like this. So I can plug that in here. Make sure that line wraps around and in, right? And then I can go, okay, well, what's the next one in front? It's probably this one that goes out here. Can draw this ribbon. And I can actually see the back of the ribbon there. 
come back around. And it comes in there. And I want to draw that center of the ribbon. Maybe I need to define it a little bit better so you can see kind of where the edges of the each bit of the flower are. Then this ribbon is coming around this way, right? And then like this here, creating a little S curve, and I can see the bo the bottom of that again, the back of it. So that center line is going to come out here and turn in towards the center of the cone. Then this bit of ribbon is coming down here. Right, and this is turning, going in. And again, we can see back because it's the ribbon, right? We're doing basically this. We're just doing it organically. And then this part is coming out. And I'm going to create. This is going to go right off the page, except drawing it kind of off center. There, that becomes more of a flat shape than a ribbon. And this is coming out behind. Like that. Okay. So there I've created a quick flower out of a couple of structures, right? And then if I really want to sell is nature of the flower, I would, you know, include bits of leaves back here. And again, this is gonna be for extreme foreground. You know, this isn't a middle ground or background flower that you would need to include. Um, okay, so I think that kind of covers it. Plants, rocks, trees, and um, and we've got our study. So what I do here is I keep my, my study by me. And um, so I'm going to put this over here. Right, like that, and I'm going to keep my reference by me. And then I'm going to start on my full landscape here. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to say, okay, well. You know, that horizon's pretty high in the photo and everything, so I'm going to lower it just a tad so it's easier to draw. I'm going to put that in. Then I'm going to think of overlapping shapes, foreground, middle ground, background. Okay? So here, I know that this is coming in and I'm coming down and exiting about here, right? And again, I'm reobserving from my initial sketch and my study. I want to be sure that I'm taking in any new thoughts or information that I need here. Okay, so there I've kind of established my foreground. And this is what I would call a front to back method. You could also draw back to front if that helps you. But I feel like this is a cleaner way to do it sometimes. And here we've got a larger rock that goes over, another large rock that goes there, little one. This kind of creates a weird, funky shape here, which I like. I want this little window to go in there. And the cool thing about this is if I need to move my horizon up or down, I can. Like the that little window is kind of cool because I can see some horizon in there, so I may want to move my horizon back up a little. Um, and I think I do. I'm going to move that to here because I like seeing the ground in there. I'm going to move this a little higher. And your reference is, rem is just a reference. Remember that. It's not the thing that you have to follow exactly. Like if I want to take this, and I'll run this hill up like that. I can. I don't think I'm going to, but I could, right? I could peek that and run that down more extreme. 
and then I know that here is going to be my horizon with these mountains in the background here. Okay, so that's kind of like layer one sketch. Now we're into the real part where we're going to develop this. And I think I'm going to split the development into another video um, and pick it up from here.